Cube Mini is a powerful and creative sample-based synth from Lunacy Audio that features an impressive 3D morphing engine. In this tutorial, we'll run through the key aspects and then take a deep dive into some of its more powerful features. First, let's familiarize ourselves with the basics. At the top of the plugin, you'll see the preset bar and above this, Cube Mini's three page selectors, sounds, main, and effects. The main page is where you adjust Cube Mini's overall sound, with different samples assigned to up to eight corners of the cube. With the orbit motion deactivated, dragging the orb within the 3D graphic adjusts the blend between corners. Holding shift and dragging the orb shifts the balance between the front four and back four corners. If we now reactivate the orbit motion option, movement between the cube corners is dynamic, following the preset's orbit, and offers both tempo synced and free time options. Cube Mini has three further main page controls, and these influence both static and orbit motion sounds. Ether is a dedicated slider that blends between the available sample layers in each sample preset. Meanwhile on the right you'll find both macro and low pass filter controls. The sounds page is where you assign and edit each of the eight sample sounds. They're labeled A to H. The overview page here includes global envelope and level controls. Meanwhile, selecting a sound opens a sound specific edit page. Finally, in the effects page, you'll find eight buttons for the modules. And these include all the usual suspects such as EQ, delay, filter, reverb, and so on. Each button opens the relevant editor page and also includes an on off button in the top right. You'll find some pages include more than one effect. The main page provides plenty of ways to modify a sound, but if you want to actually edit parameters such as envelopes or get properly creative by swapping out sounds, then you'll need to head to the sounds page. We've loaded up the preset diamond antlers and deactivated the orbit motion. On the sounds page and overview tab, we should see four sounds loaded, A, B, C, and D. By selecting the sample slot or A on the grid, we can now open the detailed editor. This now says corner A editor at the top. There are plenty of parameters to edit, and a nice trick is panning different sounds so that the orb position influences panning. Further options include sample playback start point and reverse, and there's also a really handy solo option so you can focus on just the sample you're editing. To tailor the sample playback, there's a simple ADSR envelope, and if active for this sample sound, it will bypass the global ADSR. Meanwhile, sample specific tone shaping comes from high and low pass filters and a formant filter. The basic sample editor is supplemented by a further tweak page that you select in the top right. Here you'll find a stereo width option, key range and glide time. The remainder of the tweak page handles the loop time and arpeggiator feature. To get started, you need to activate the loop time panel and set a loop time to define the arpeggiator step division. Now you can head to the main arpeggiator panel below and the ARP steps section to the right. On the main panel, you'll find various typical ARP settings, including pattern style, number of octaves, swing, and number of steps. Meanwhile, the ARP steps section on the right includes three lanes for step specific control of length, velocity, and pitch. Finally, if you want a quick solution, there are a bunch of ARP presets.